If it's your first time here, welcome. Um, you joined at the beginning of a two-part mini-series. And I'm going to be completely honest with you and say I'm uncomfortable <laughs> preaching this uh, because I don't typically um, preach politically things, political stuff at all. I mean, if you've been around Unison for a while, um, we, we talk about politics because it's a part of what it is to be a human being <laughs> at, on the planet right now, but never preaching toward any politics at all. And that's never going to change, so today's no different there. But because we are in the middle of um, an election part of the year, um, this kind of midterm elections, these uh, more local elections, we felt it valuable for us to preach about that as a teaching team right now. So some of you know, hopefully you know, Tuesday we have an election um, and um, real talk. We want, I'm actually encouraging it, those of us who are able to, to participate in said election just as much as I would encourage us to participate in any one. Um, so this week, uh, we'll be kind of talking about who we are leading up to that, and next week, talking about who we are after. The title of the sermon series is um, How to Win and Lose Like Jesus. <laughs> uh, because uh, even though we are in a political, a highly politicalized um, world and highly political season in our life. Um, you can't do both. You can't, there's nobody wins and loses. To somebody who wins and somebody who loses. Um, and I think it's important for us to be able to understand as believers, how do we live on both of those sides of that line? Uh, so the title of the sermon is Prepping for a Win will be in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. I'm going to pray um, because I uh, uh, want to bring my brain and my soul and my nerves in the same place. Jesus, <laughs> we love you. You are our king and our guide. Um, in all that we do, we want to glorify you. In all that we are, we want to honor you. And all that we say, think, do, feel, God, we want your spirit to guide us, but also your name to be praised, your identity to be seen in and through us, God. So the parts of us that want to even make um, our voting about us, we surrender this morning. The part of us that comes to this conversation with angst and vulnerability, we surrender this morning. Because if we want to glorify you with all of our life, this is no different. So may your words be what we hear. May your heart be what we feel today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Scripture does not speak directly to how we should vote at all, period. In fact, most of the time in Scripture, I won't even say most of, all of the time in Scripture, the writers of Scripture have no imagination for a democratic system. <laughs> None. Like, they have no imagination for it. All of them were written within the context of monarchies, and most of the Bible is written while they are under occupation of another kingdom, right? So when we read through both the Old Testament and the New Testament, none of them are thinking about our way of doing government at all, which means that we come to some tension when we come to Scripture because you're not going to find your system in the Bible at all. But oftentimes we want to take the systems of the Bible and place them into the systems of our government, and it doesn't work. They don't fit. They're not the same. So this can't be about us trying to go into scripture and say, well, who should I vote for, Jesus? <laughs> that can't be. This has to be about something else. But this is not about. This is not about propping up any political party. It's not a thing. This is not about how and who you should vote for. That's not a thing. 
That's not, it's not about telling you what to think or deceiving you into believing that the Bible is going to explicitly give you answers about how to vote. I know that that would feel easier for us as believers if I could just rattle off some scriptures and Proverbs for you and then connect it to what's going on in our political system right now and connect it to what the debates are and then tell you this is how we should vote. That would be easy, but that's not the Bible. That's not how it works. It's not an almanac. What is this, though? What this sermon is about is pointing to a way of being that outlasts every single debate. It's about highlighting the values of Scripture and highlighting the values of the Spirit of God that allow us to be able to participate in the glorifies God. And it's making room for conviction. I'm going to say that part again. It's also about making room for conviction because some of us have gotten caught up in in which this kingdom does decision making, which is making enemies out of friends, when it is the way in which our kingdom functions to make friends out of enemies. And we need some room for conviction because some of us, myself included, listen, I'm gonna tell you about my personal conviction this week in a moment. But some of us, every cycle of elections, we get caught up in the commercials. We get caught up in the debates. We get caught up in us and them and them and us and they're out to get us and we need to make sure we hold firm. And all that is is the way this world does making decisions. And that's not how we as believers do anything in the kingdom of God. The way that we are in the kingdom of God is, is all of us. We see things differently, but we need to maintain our all of us by the end of this decision. Some gray space we have to talk about. God does not desire to determine the outcome of our elections. Look, right? Gasp. What? <laughs> I know some of us want that to be the case. Where, and, we, and we oftentimes talk about it simplistically like that. It's okay for us to enter into this gray space of God being in complete control, yes, but wanting us to steward what happens down here, which is this gray space of we're supposed to make the decision within the context of God's values, and God's glory. But that, by definition, means he doesn't actually want to make the decision for us, which is this gray, ambiguous, God, why don't you just tell us, space? Listen, that would be easy, and it would be convenient if we all could just sit in a room for a minute and pray, who you want us to vote for, God? I'm pretty sure that's not God's intent. There's too many portions of scripture that talk about the dominion and stewardship we're supposed to have in the earth. Genesis all the way through Revelation. I'm going to point to one in Psalm 8 that does a good job of balancing this tension. It's the whole uh, eighth chapter of Psalm. Our Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them a little lower than God. I want to I put the Elohim there because we did that spirit realm series that word there is not big G God, even though it might say it in our, like you may see that in your version of the scripture. The Hebrew there is you made us a little lower than the Elohim, meaning you made us a little lower than the heavenly beings. Right. And crowned them as in us with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. He's talking about us. 
the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean's currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. It holds this tension of the identity of God being filling the earth, the glory of God filling the earth, and he made us to take care of that. <laughs> we are designed with dominion in mind as human beings. And while it would be nice, and I think we make a caricature of our religion sometimes when we default to God's in control, God's in control, God's sovereign, God's in control. Yes, 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 and in his sovereignty said, you need to make decisions about what happens here. God's majesty isn't fully on display if we're not actually stewarding well. We have to think about it that way, right? Because if we don't, we again, we start to make ourselves into robots. We want to make ourselves into robots, and that doesn't glorify God, and God's majesty isn't on display when that's the way we do that. So the tension, the gray space that Psalms calls us to, that Genesis and Revelation calls us to, is God is glorified most when we make decisions stewarding this creation based upon his character, based upon his values. There are an estimated 258 million 327,000 eligible voters <laughs> in the United States. It would be a lot easier if we lived in a monarchy. Because <laughs> then there would just be one person to make the decision. I'm not saying it would be better, I'm just saying it would be easier in terms of making decisions. The truth is, the complexity of what it is to take all of them millions of people. I know this is a state thing, right? But all of us are thinking through what is, what's happening for this whole country together. So all of them are also thinking about many of the same things we're thinking about, processing how do we make a decision that is good for all, and that is complex. It's not simple at all. Our default has been in this country, us and them and them and them and them. I believe that scripture calls us to say we are stewards of this country, not us and them and them and them and them. We are stewards of this country, regardless of what you see. We have to figure out how to do this together or we tear this up. <laughs> but don't tell me y'all ain't. Busy. I know some of y'all. Y'all watching the news. Y'all know it's toe up. <laughs> it's toe up. It's, it's toe up. Look, it's, there, there is no we. And that's not politicians' fault. That's not on Republicans or Democrat, Democrats. That's not on Green Party people. That's not on MAGA people. That's not on anything. Because it's actually our responsibility as the church to show people how to do this together. It's on us. It's on us as believers. We should not have an expectation for the kingdoms of this world to figure out how to do this together when they have not been steeped in the power of the Holy Spirit that it gives you the ability to do this together. We are the ones who are actually supposed to be demonstrating to the earth how to do this together. But we join the rhetoric. <laughs> we like it's us and them. We, humanity, has a role in the earth, has a purpose to govern and steward that which is in the earth and we as the church have a role and a purpose to show the world how to do that together 
and particularly in our political context, our governmental system that does not have one or two people trying to make decisions for the whole, but we, for some reason, thought it was a good idea to get 257 million people to make decisions together regularly, which I agree, it's great. But that complexity means we actually have to really lean into our purpose. We can't pretend that mature people should just be able to do this. We have to be real about the fact that Holy Spirit-led people are the folks who are able to do this and lead with that. Because when we don't, it's toe up. So, Matthew chapter 5 is where I want to go. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Some of us have heard this portion of scripture during political seasons, and, and then they immediately start talking about abortion. <laughs> immediately start talking about X, Y, Z system and or political affiliation. We have to stand for biblical values, and those are great. But there is a biblical value that we oftentimes overlook trying to make sure that one initiative passes through. And that is unity all the way through scripture. That is a biblical value all the way through scripture that we ignore. If we lose our saltiness which is to show the world how to do this together not just push my initiative woo. It's toe up. Some of us are like, oh man, where is he going with this? What is he saying? I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to tell you what to think. I promise you I'm not. That's not my job. I'm not going to tell you what to think about any particular thing that's going on in politics right now. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to tell you what thing that's going on. I'm not telling you what proposal to check no or yes on because that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the saltiness that we need to keep United States of America right now is our ability to do this together, not whether or not we agree on the same thing. If we can't do that, if we as the church can't do that, there really is no hope for us having witness here. And we may as well keep our Christian part out of our vote because it doesn't matter. There are non-Christians that agree with you. politically. What is the difference between you and them? The difference is that I can still love people who disagree with me. The difference is I can go vote on Tuesday and have lunch with someone who's in a different political party. That's the saltiness that we bring. That's the part we bring to this puzzle. When we don't do it, it's toe up. <laughs> you are the light of the world, a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see that everyone will praise your heavenly father. I actually asked a couple of people to help me with this part. So do you mind coming up here right now? Are you good, Bruce, to help me with this? Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you the big flashlight. <laughs> okay. And... Both of you get one of these. Oh, fancy pants. <laughs> okay. Um, I think oftentimes uh, when we, thank you both for helping me with this, by the way. When, um, when we're talking about light, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I got you, I got you, Ruth. I got you. <laughs> oftentimes when we're talking about light, um, and we think about that from the, 
from a political standpoint, and we're trying to bring light, we acknowledge, I'm going to just pretend, pretend that we only have two political parties in the United States. I'm pretending, even though most of us feel that way, <laughs> there are more than just two. <laughs> but <laughs> for the sake of going with what we all feel, we feel that, I need you to use the laser pointer for this one. Um, yes, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want you to point, use the laser to point in each other's faces. Maybe just like on each other's shirts. We feel like we're supposed to use our light to point to the darkness in the other party. Right? Like, God's word says this, so y'all shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> God's word says this, so y'all shouldn't be doing that. That's how we, that's oftentimes how we come to voting when we try to bring scripture into our political participation. And oftentimes what we end with is us not being united. But if we were to actually look at all of, all of what scripture says, I need you to now switch for me. You're going to use the flashlight. Turn it on for me. Okay. Yes, and I and your and yeah, and your initial, our initial thought may be to point it toward the other, but the truth of Scripture is that it actually is supposed to be pointed toward ourselves, wow. right? Instead of seeing, instead of believing that I'm the light of the world, so I can point to that other political party's issues and their sin. Really what this is supposed to be is, God, I feel most attached and most in alignment with this political view. Use me as a light to shine where there is darkness among where I feel affiliated. Because there's darkness on both sides. Amen? It's not my job to find the darkness on the other side, just like it's not my job to find the darkness in my sister or brother, but allow the light of Christ to shine in me that I might see what's going on inside of Chase. This is our job. It's not my job to go around with a flashlight searching for all the darkness in the XYZ political party. It's my job to say, Holy Spirit, I feel most affiliated in this Place. They agree with me politically, but they also have darkness here, too. So help me to appropriately shine light on the darkness where I feel affiliation so that we may glorify you more. Man, thank you. Consider just for a second, consider for a moment if that's how we as believers thought. There's believing Republicans, there's believing Democrats. That is what it is. I know some of you feel like, mm, that, that, that other part, they can't be walking with Jesus because, yes, they are. Yes, they are. There are fully devoted Bible believing believers all across the spectrum politically. And we've taught each other that my political beliefs are in some ways either equal to or similar to my affiliation with Christ, and it's not. But if all of us, regardless of what camp we're in, said, Holy Spirit, use me to shine a light in this camp so that the people who are a part of this camp can see you more clearly because they're more likely to receive you from me than the other camp. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's our job. It's not our job to try to use earthly tactics to impact a political decision. It is our job to participate, yes, but we will always, always use kingdom tactics in our participation.
we know, I told you the title of the sermon is Prepping for a Win. <laughs> the win isn't if what I voted for passes. Amen. Amen. That's just not it. That can't be my standard. That may be the standard of my unbelieving neighbors, cousins, and aunties and uncles, but that's not the standard for us as believers. Everything on this earth will pass away, so I have to be thinking about something that's far more eternal than that. (laughs) A win for us. We know when we've won, when we've made the decision and maintained our shared identity. That's it. We know we've won when we've made the decision and we've maintained our shared identity as co-stewards of this earth. If I don't see you as a steward of the earth just like me, because you have a different thought or opinion or idea politically, then we've lost. As believers, we've lost. We've lost. And while I want us to participate, I would rather us participate in a way that brings glory to the Father, that points to the unity of the body of Christ and is empowered by the Holy Spirit than to participate, pretend that we ain't Christians for two weeks. And just get what we want out of it. That isn't it for us. I'm prepping for a win. Regardless of whether what I want happens, I'm prepping for a win. I know I have sisters and brothers in this room who we do not see eye to eye politically or economically. I'm prepping for a win with you. I'm prepping for a win with you. My conviction this week, I told uh, uh, during our staff meeting, we're joking about the fact that, like, we keep getting these flyers and these things in the mail. Like, there was one day I counted, and there were seven. In one day, saints, seven. (laughs) Like, seven of them things. (laughs) And then more the next day. (laughs) And then more the next day. (laughs) And I was frustrated by it. Like, listen, stop sending me this stuff. Stop coming to my door. Stop texting me. (laughs) My my conviction during the middle of this sermon prep was um, I could have seen every single time I got in the text or seen every single time something came in the mail as an invitation to pray for them, and I didn't. I was just frustrated by it. And I'm not saying that that's what all of us need to do. I'm just telling you what my personal conviction was. I was so frustrated by the fact that they're littering my mailbox. (laughs) Killing trees. <laughs> right? I'm, I was so frustrated by that, but I, that I missed the invitation to pray for these people and their families, whom, aside from whether or not I agree with them politically, their family is under scrutiny. <laughs> All a business is out on the street. There are regular ads about how they suck at life <laughs> from the other side. Right? Let's just be real. That's, that's the political climate we're in isn't just political ads about how they're going to do great. You see more about how they just, they're, they're just trash human beings. That's what we see on ads. What if I saw that as an invitation to pray for them that their mind and their soul would be kept throughout the craziness of what this is. Because at the end of the day, regardless of whether or not they get voted in or regardless of what I feel like about them, they have positioned themselves to serve us in some way. Let's pray for them. That's how, that's how I want to be as a person, as a believer. So after that conviction, I got one in the mail, and I was like, okay, Lord, here we go. (laughs) 
And I still respond, stop to these texts, but I'm praying for them. Well, because <laughs> I don't need that many invitations. <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, I said from the beginning, this sermon, the whole series, the whole mini series, isn't about telling you what to do. It's about leaning into our purpose. And our purpose, we may have believed that our purpose is to maintain biblical principles in, a, in, in this country. And that's not a bad thing. Keep doing it. Please keep doing it. But we have a purpose that supersedes just maintaining policies. And our purpose will never be about the policies. Our purpose will always be about people. So what is it that we need to be maintaining? Maintaining our shared stewardship, our shared identity as co-stewards of this country. That's the thing that our hearts need to be. The complexity means I don't have to, we won't agree on all things and that's okay. Next week, we'll talk about how to lose well. <laughs> Look, how to lose like Jesus. This is how to win like Jesus. Then we'll talk about how to lose like Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. You are magnified and glorified. When people who do not see eye to eye look toward you <laughs> together. <clears throat> when people who do not share the same perspective look, intently look to find your identity, your fingerprints on one another. <clears throat> you have allowed us to be in this place and experience the benefits of making these decisions together, may we not get caught up in the liability of making these decisions together too. It is a strength of our country. But with every strength comes this weakness that we have to be aware of. Holy Spirit, help us to live as you would guide us. May we be salt and light. Not salt and light so that what I want comes to pass, but salt and light so that you are glorified. So that our good deeds point to you, Heavenly Father. As we go into this week, would you give us a spirit of humility to go along with the spirit of courage? May we carry them both as we participate. And when those around us would seek to cause greater and greater division, may you give us a courage and an audacity to believe that we could be bridge builders here. It's in your name we pray. Amen.